A nitinol engine like this is a low RPM motor. I had this one up to around 60 RPM with no load, but it generally operates around 40 RPM. The nitinol takes time to heat up to activate, and it also takes time to cool down again on each revolution. This can only happen so fast. In order to get some more useful power out of it, I built in some magnetic gearing. What I have is a flat ring of steel with magnets spaced around the inside of it, and this makes the big magnetic gear. The smaller magnetic gear is simply a hole saw bit with magnets spaced around it to match the bigger gear. It's just mounted to a support with some bearings. It can also swivel out of the way when I want to disengage it. The ratio that I have between these two gears is 10 to 1. So with one revolution of the motor, the big gear, the smaller gear will turn 10 times. So if the engine was turning 40 RPMs, the smaller gear wheel would be turning at 400 RPMs. I placed a small piece of reflective tape on the small magnetic gear to get an RPM reading. And I'll do that now. The temperature of the water that this op is operating at right now is about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I'll test the load. The way this load test is set up is I attached one end of a string to the shaft of the small magnetic gear and the other end of the string I attached to the weight that's sitting on the floor. When I engage the engine, the turning shaft will wind up the spring, raising the weight. I want to time how long it will take to raise the weight a certain height. That will let me be able to calculate the foot pounds per second the engine is putting out. The board I have set out is marked out in feet, and I will use that to determine how high the weight is lifted. I will engage the engine and let it start raising the weight. It needs to build up the speed first, so I won't start the timer until it gets one foot off the floor. That's the first mark you'll see on the screen there. And then I'll time how long it takes to raise the next three feet. I realize you're not able to see the reading, but I did this test seven times and they're all real close. The average time it took for the weight to raise the three feet was 4.3 seconds. Now I could calculate the output of the engine in foot pounds per second. One foot pound per second is the amount of power it takes to raise one pound, one foot, and one second. So I took the weight of 1.515 pounds, the weight I was using, and multiplied it by 3 feet. Then I divided it by 4.3 seconds, the amount of time it took to raise the 3 feet. 
The answer was 1.057 foot-pounds per second. Now, one foot-pound per second is equal to 1.3558 watts. So I multiplied it by that and got the answer of 1.43 watts. That was the useful output that I was receiving. The water temperature was at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and that was the useful output power. It's also taking power to turn the engine through the water. So I did a little drop test with the same weight to get an idea of what that might be. It took a little bit longer for the weight to drop than it did to rise. So the engine is actually using a little bit more power to run it than what we were seeing at the shaft output. Overall, I'm guessing the night is probably producing close to three watts. There's 12 grams of nitinol wire in this machine. 12 grams is about the same weight as a AAA battery. It's not very much. If the nitinol in this engine is producing, say, 3 watts, including the losses of the engine and everything, we're getting close to about 250 milliwatts per gram of nitinol. I would expect if I just add more nitinol wire to this machine, I could get more usable output power. And I don't think the losses of the motor pushing through the water would be much greater than with this amount of wire because it won't be trying to increase the RPMs. So I think scaling up this design wouldn't be that difficult. So how long will the nitinol last? The nitinol wire that I'm using is called muscle wire. The manufacturer of it states that if the wire is not overstressed and used within their guidelines, the expectation of tens of millions of cycles is reasonable. To put that in perspective, if this motor turns at 40 RPMs, that's 40 cycles a minute, or 2,400 cycles per hour, or still 37,600 cycles per day. 10 million cycles would be 173.6 days going 24 hours a day. I have not broken any night and all wires in this machine yet, but I have broken some linkages. There needs to be some stress relief for the night and all wire. With its built-in magnetic gearing, there is some stress relief because there's a gap between the magnets, and if too much pressure is put on them, they will start to slip, and it will save the night and all wire from getting overstressed and breaking. So how long it will last, it's still not determined yet on this machine. But I think as long as I don't try to push it too hard, it will keep going pretty long. This is new technology. Check back in again for further developments and the availability of some plans. Thanks for watching.